Hello everyone! How are you guys doing? Welcome to our live stream! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, please let me know if the audio is working nicely. Let me know if you can hear me properly. Let me know if uh, the music is too loud. All that stuff is important for us to make sure we have a great live stream today. So let's see, who do we have here? We got MG McInter. With a cool question, I'm gonna answer that in just a second. Icy Film, Aryan, how are you, my friend? Prince, Think Mesh, Emergency Fudge, Georgie, Neon Polyform, how are you guys? Welcome, welcome. All good, all good, perfect, perfect. That's good to hear. Right, so let's see. Uh, we're starting strong with a very good question by MG McIncher. He says, does things I make in Seabrush be used in other places? New to this, so how to export and in what format? Yes, yes, you can actually use uh, all of the things that you do inside of Seabrush into other software such as Maya, 3D Studio Max, Unreal Engine, 3d printing like depending on where you're going you might be changing the the format of the file if you're doing things for production for video games movies commercials you're probably going to be exporting things in fbx format which is called film box format and uh, that contains all the information of the polygons of uh, that you have inside of seabrush um and if you're going to be doing things for uh, 3d printing for instance you're probably going to be using the stl format which is going to give you a different um type of uh, like a model that you're gonna be using for 3D printers or resin 3D printers. So yeah, there we go. Um, Icy Film says, may I ask the question about the course sale? Of course, of course you can, my friend. Uh, we are running a our monthly like super sale. This is April's super sale. So all of our courses, we have over 66 different courses inside of uh, Udemy are gonna be discounted for the next couple days until April 27th. So if you go to Udemy and the link is in the description and you go and look for any of our courses over here, you guys are gonna be able to uh, buy any course and apply the coupon code to get the maximum amount of a discount available to your country. Some countries will give you 90% discount, other countries will give you like 83% discounts, some others might give you like 85, so it's it's regional based. Uh, some countries you get like a different pricing. For instance, I'm in, in Mexico, so I get Mexican pesos. And if I wanted, the only thing I need to do is go into the course. Let's say I wanna get uh, this one right here. I add it to my cart. We go to the cart and uh, we can use our promo code, which is all April 2023. And you can see I get 87% off for my region. So it goes all the way to 129 pesos, which is like six, seven dollars. So I think it's worth it. I think it's really worth it. So yeah, um, if you guys want to get any of our courses, this is the time. Like this is when all of the courses go in sale or on sale. The Udemy profile link is broken. Okay, let me fix that. I will fix that right away. Let's copy this. Okay, let me know if it's uh, working now, but if not, uh, here's the here's the link as well. There we go. Uh, there's a question here that says, is fog in Marmoset good for environment? Yes, it's actually really good. I, I really like the fog instead of Marmoset. I don't have Marmoset right now installed on my computer. I, I haven't installed it after I had to format it a couple of weeks ago, but uh, I will install it and I'll show you. But yeah, it, it's it's a really good one. I um, We used fog for, we had the Halloween special and we're gonna have one this year, of course. But here's what I, I told you guys, there's so much content in our channel. So if you go, to the um, videos section of our channel. We had the, the Halloween special last year. And one of the projects that we did was this uh, La Llorona, which is a Mexican myth. And uh, we did a render with Fog. Where is it? There we go, this one. So uh, I think it's what, I'm not sure if it was a live stream or what, but we, we did this 
this productions for the Halloween special. And it was it was really, really cool. So if you guys want to check it out, it's also here on the channel. We got like what? Like almost 800 videos, I think, on the channel. Six, seven, 760 videos on the channel. Wow, that's a lot. Okay. So let's start uh, cleaning some of this stuff up. Uh, um, It's just one second. There we go. Sorry, I had to take care of a message right there. Okay, so uh, let's see some questions real quick. Uh, um, uh, Sayak says, thank you for Maya reading course. You're welcome. Do you like that one? It's usually not the first pick for, for people. Like, uh, usually um, rigging is one of those things that people don't like as much because it's a little bit more complex. Um, but uh, I, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Barjassin from France right now. Excellent. Yeah, we're, we have our map, our student map over here. So if you're from a country that we have not mentioned yet, you can let us know in the comments and I'll scratch that off. One of my goals is to get a student from every single part of the uh, concept. Um, give me just one second. Ah. One second, one second. We got some situation going here on the studio. Sorry, I'm sorry. I normally try to to have everything like uh, ready for for the stream, but we got some um, unforeseen circumstances. So let me just answer this. There we go. So, uh, IC Film says, I thank you. Uh, I'm not just with internet shopping, especially buying another country with Visa. So, I'm confused which one I should buy. Is there a full pipeline course in one package that you think? Yes, IC Film. Actually, we do have one. If you look for the complete guide to Maya 2022, that is a complete project. I show you how to do a little animation. It's like a 10 second animation, but I go through everything modeling, rendering, rigging, animation, everything. I think that's the best one if you want to get something. Um, as for the full pipeline with all of the characters, you might need a little bit more experience. I'm not sure how experienced you are in the um, in the in the softwares themselves, but we do have the one that is uh, the um, like the character creation, like the advanced character creation. I also go through that one uh, right there. So those could be a good a good way to go. Neon Polyform says, "I have learned Marmoset from your course and thinking about Arnold. Which one would be best for an environment? Arnold. I think Arnold is going to give you better results. Marmoset is usually a little bit better for characters or props." Um, because it's uh, it's game ready, right? Like it's like an, it's, it's like an engine. If you want to go for very realistic environments, then Arnold's gonna give you a really really nice uh, result. So many, uh, <laughs> so many messages that I need to take care of. It's uh, 
gets a little bit crazy. Not you, not you guys, not you. I mean, like this the studio. For those of you that don't know, I I am a, a partner of a studio here, and uh, we're just kicking the day off. And uh, there's a couple of things that we were uh, solving. So what are we gonna be doing today? We're gonna be doing uh, the bakes and the UVs for this thing right here. And uh, you can see that we have the retopology right here. This is the final retopologized mesh for the book. And uh, we're gonna be preparing this for um, for UVs and, and texturing. Okay, that's the um, that's the thing. Am I still doing the art support? Yes, I have not checked the folder, so I'm not sure how many submissions we have. But I'm gonna do more art uh, art support this week, probably for Friday. For Friday. Um, yes, of course, icy film. So let me. Let me give you the, the one that I meant. So if you go to the to the link that was up here, the Udemy link, all of the courses are here, this one. So this is the one that I mean. This is the complete guide to Maya 2023. It's a great way to learn. Look at this, 892 students. I'm really proud of this one. Um, we had a really, really good, uh, I had a really good time teaching this one. So um, uh, yeah, that one I go over like everything, modeling, rigging, animation, everything. And at the end you make this little, uh, like animation right here with the robot, like like uh, like destroying a Jenga tower with dynamics and stuff. So it's really really fun. I think I think you guys are gonna like it. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, let's see what else. Uh, that's a lot of detailed layers for an art, any artist. Is drawing your background? It's mine, and that's why I feel like I can pick up. Right. What what do you mean layers, my friend? I'm not sure. What do you mean by layers? Uh, these are not layers. Or, or do you mean layers from, like, the modeling and stuff? Arian says, the cinematic lightning one is one of my favorite. Thank you, thank you. I also had a lot of fun with that one. So, UVs. Let's jump into uh, Jubies. So, if we want to texture this, if we want to bake all of the details from this guy to, or from the from the hard, from the high poly to this guy right here, we need to create something called UVs. UVs are a 2D representation of this 3D surface right here. And we're going to have to do this for every single part. We're still missing like the teeth right here and the, and the lock. So, here's what we're going to do. This is a very organic model, right? Like it's not it's not super obvious how or where we should do the UVs. So whenever you're faced with a model such as this one, and I'll answer more questions in just a second, but when you're faced with a model like this one, one of the things that you need to do is try to separate the, or find the areas where hiding the UV seams is gonna be better for us. So my way to do UVs is as follows. I'm gonna go UV, I'm gonna create a camera-based projection, which is gonna take a picture of the element, and you're going to see that now we actually have a UV. We could technically texture on this, but it's only going to look good from this side right here. Okay. So this uh, element right here now has a UV so that we can decide where we're going to be doing the cuts. Now I can see that we already have some cuts right here. That means that there is some sort of like angon or some split on the geometry, which should not be uh, there. So I'm going to delete this guys right here. There you go. You can see that that's where this thing is kind of like split. So we're going to go from here to here and bridge and from here to here and bridge. It should be a like completely, completely feel effect. So I'm going to go my 3D cut and show UV tool again. I'm just going to do a quick check. There we go. We got a couple of other issues over here. Just little vertices that are not uh, welded together. So right there and right there. Let's do it again. UV 3D cut. Let's just quickly scan to see if there's there's another one right here. It's probably this one's right there. If this happens, to be honest, this is a simple one. I think just collapsing this one might be a better idea. So edit mesh and we collapse. It seems to be coming from this guy's right here. Oh, it's like an extra face right there. Okay. Now we just reach again. There we go. We're not going to be using a uh, number three mode. 
um, I just use it to, to visualize and find any of those like errors that we might have. There we go. So I'm going to go on the inside of this guy right here. And we're going to cut the paper from the like cover of the book. That's a, I think that's a great place to, to do a separation on our UVs. So this should allow us to split things a little bit nicely. In a nicer way, rather. There we go. Now here, for instance, we're going to go in and then down. There we go. Look there. I'm going to go pretty much all the way around. There we go. As you can see, that will finish the, the inside of the book, and that's going to give us a nice seam line right there. Um, let me check this. Uh, uh, Let's answer some questions. So, bu -bu 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 -bum. Aryan, yeah, I'll, I'll check. I'll check uh, Discord in just a second. I, I don't want to get too distracted right now because otherwise we're never gonna finish this prop. But I'll, I'll check that one. Uh, is there other package to teach Marvelous Seabirds full pipeline in one package too? Yes, there, there are s several of those, my friend. Again, just just go in Udemy and uh, just look for the ones that I've been teaching. And, and there's a lot of like full courses over there. Uh, Mac Incher says, do you use any AI as a shortcut in your workflow or will you and how? If not, how would you see others able to specialize? Yes, I've used AI. I use it to like just generate quick ideas, especially when I want to do props and stuff and uh, and I don't really know what to model. I can just like like throw in something quick on the on the things. I've also been using ChatGPT to create like the stories for my characters, which I think is really, really cool because you can get some really nice stories. I mean, you're not going to be a bestseller probably, but um, you can get something that's a lot better than what you originally thought. What I've seen about AI, and this is one of my advices, is the more you give the AI, the more you're going to get back. So for instance, if I tell the AI, hey, give me a story for a fantasy knight that is going to kill a red dragon. It's going to give you a very generic, obvious, boring story. But if you start giving it more ideas, like, okay, this knight, he was uh, exiled from his country, and uh, he has a sister, and the sister is evil, and uh, he uh, is blind, or I don't know. Like, if the more information you give, uh, like, the AI engines for anything, images or, or write, written text or stuff, the more, like, flushed your, your idea is going to be. And I think that's one of the advantages. So... Even though AI is very scary because it feels like it's coming for our jobs, I think if we learn how to use it as a tool, you can get something really, really cool, really, really fast. Uh, let's see. Orion says, I have an offer from a startup and the salary they're promoting is a bit low. Should I join to start getting experience or should I wait and apply for a bigger studio? That's a great question and that's all up to you, my friend. Um, it, it's very difficult for me to give you a, an educated opinion on what would be the best for you because I've had friends that did that, like the, the thing that you're doing, like they started at a, at a small studio with low pay. I actually did that and it turned out nicely, so it worked for me. But I've also had people have that have tried that and it didn't work for them. So it's, um, it's, uh, it, it's very difficult to guess what's going to happen. And uh, my best I, advice would be to, to really think about it and uh, and you you should make the decision like do you if money is not an issue if you can survive or if you have support such as your parents or stuff then i, I think it might be worth it because you will start getting some experience and that's like a very quick way to uh to grow in this industry by by getting your name out there and, and getting to people to know what you're doing but at the same time i know it's not an option for everyone so that's why i'm always very very hesitant to, to give that advice. I did that. Like when I was a, a, a young student, I worked at a, at a studio for very low pay just because I wanted to to learn and to get my um, my foot on the door, as they say, right? But it's, um, it's a decision everyone should make for themselves. Uh, Roma, what's up, my friend? Uh, Arian, I have not heard about plasticity. I th or maybe I have, I'm actually not sure. So here I'm just cutting all of the edges, all the UV edges to, to get a cleaner cut on our 
on our lock section. And uh, I think that's pretty much it. Now, I know that the book's not going to unfold as nicely if I just do it this way. So I'm going to I'm going to actually cut the front part and the back part and the spine of the book as two separate pieces. And I'm going to use this border to uh to do so right here. There we go. There we go. There we go. Then we need to cut in just a couple of edges right there and we go to the corner perfect and we're gonna do the same thing over here now i'm not too worried about the actual spine or the edge right there because inside of substance we can actually play around with a lot of different tricks to um to create a, a slightly different result like this guy's right here like what what should we do is is a good question right like should we go around them or should we like complete them i think it, we should go around them Now over here, I'm going to be very careful because I actually want to go around this corner as well to hide the seam line a little bit better. There we go. Let's save real quick. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. No, no phone X says, could you do a tutorial on how we can put the CG stuff we make into a real life photo we take from inside home, for example, how we can match the perspective, maybe lightning, etc. Well, my friend, I got good news for you. I've already done that. <laughs> I did that last year as well. When, um, what was it? Uh, Game of Thrones, uh, or not Game of Thrones, uh, the dragon thing, what was the name? House of Dragons, House of the Dragon was, um, really popular. So if you scroll here into our videos, I did a dragon egg. Where is it? Here we go. So it's this one. It's, uh, we got two or three parts. First we did the, this one, Maya modeling tutorial dragon egg part one. And then we did this one, Seabrush sculpting tutorial dragon egg part two, where I show you a cool tool to get some nice detail. And then I showed this one, create your own 360 image and use it in 3D where I show you how to uh, integrate this image into a render so that it looks like it's with you on your room. So yeah, that's the that's the one, man, if you want to check it out. We've already done that. We might we might later do a tutorial. Actually, that might not be a bad idea, like a full tutorial, more production-ready uh, tutorial. But if you want to like understand the basics, that's a good way to do it. So uh, now it's the the big uh, the big reveal. Let's gonna let's see if our UVs work. So I'm just gonna say Control U to unfold it, and it says, "Hey, you got non-manifold geometry, which is bad. That means we got some some weird elements here or there." I'm really curious where that would be. So I'm gonna say Mesh. We're gonna go to Cleanup, and I'm gonna look. I'm gonna say Select Matching Polygons. I don't want the one just to clean. I mean, let's start with Angons. Let's see if we have Angons. And we do have angles. That's really weird. Why do we have angles? Wow, that's a that's a really weird angle right there. Okay, no problem. Well, let's just merge those three. That shouldn't be an angle anymore. Okay, we got a couple more angles here. These are super easy to fix. Someone was asking about this. So when you have an angle like this, just doing that is more than enough, especially for low poly. As long as we're not gonna be smoothing things, it's it's fine. See again. Okay, we got another one over here. An angon is any polygon that has more than four sides. And you can get into a lot of problems in, with softwares by having angles. I mean, they're not the it's not the end of the world, right? But um they're not ideal. So there we go. Select this and nothing gets selected, then that means that we are free of angles, which is great. So now we should be able to do the unfold. Unfold, what unfold will do is it will okay, let's try to fix it. It will just like divide everything into its parts, as you can see right here. 
So it's going to be the front of the book. It's going to be the back of the book. Got a couple pieces there. I'm not sure where those are coming from. That's the lock and stuff. So yeah, this works. This is going to work. Right now it's not clean, but it's uh, it's going to work. Uh, let me hide this guy right here. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, Aryan, if your parents are supporting them, then that would be great. Like, just, just getting your name out the door and, um, or just getting your name out there and, and starting a career, it, it's a good idea. But I would still, like, once you join this company, even if it's for a low pay, I would still keep looking for other options out there, right? Like, you should not stop, lo uh, stop looking because now you're going to have experience and that's going to be great. Sayan, how are you, my friend? Welcome, welcome. Would you recommend using Udems and environment or expert individual objects? Stuff like walls and floors. Um, that's a good question. I mean, it all depends. But I would probably use Udems just to make it a little bit easier to texture everything inside the substance and just have one single material. Especially if I'm doing things inside of Arnold, I would definitely use Udems. If I'm doing things inside of... Um, What's the word? Instead of uh, real or marmoset, I'll probably just do it traditionally. No for next. Thank you, man. Uh, I've been. The <laughs> it's a it's a, it's a complicated uh, situation to to make sure that uh, all of the streams and everything are ready. I I'm not gonna lie. It's uh it's definitely uh, demanding, <laughs> but uh, I I really enjoy it. So so thank you for for your kind words. Okay. Now. Here's what I'm going to show you guys. This is this is the like the big uh, reveal for for today's lesson. As you can see, the high poly has a lot of different uh, like pieces, right? Like little pieces and stuff. And it will be very 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 tedious to try to um, to mask out things inside of um, inside of um, Substance Painter once we go into into texturing. So we're going to create something called an ID map. This is one of those things. I don't even remember I was be I was taught this when I was in school because it was not something that was used as much. But ID maps are really, really, really important for any sort of bake process because it allows us to create masks that are going to make it really easy to paint specific areas of our elements, especially areas that are like uh, like uh, colliding or, or overlapping each other. So ID maps is really, really, really good. Uh, does cinematic lightning course cover rendering as well? Neon Polyform is asking. Yes, yes, it does. We go over rendering techniques and how to optimize the scene and stuff like that. Uh, Roma says, Abraham, do you know any AI or any other way to polish the video from noise? I need to reduce noise. Mm, After Effects has some denoiser, I think. I haven't used it personally, but After Effects... Denoiser... You can try this one. I mean, there's some plugins and stuff. I know Nuke also has a denoiser that you could use. Even, even I think even Blender has a denoiser. You're gonna have, you're gonna need the image sequence though, not the video. I think if you have the sequence of images, you can use it to 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 denoise. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna start adding materials to specific parts of this element, and unfortunately, I think I lost the. I lost the concept. Let's see if uh, I can find it real quick. Yeah, here it is. Okay. It was one of like the first Google searches. Okay, so this is the the original concept, and as you can see, there are different materials that are being used for for this whole thing. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to the object itself. I'm gonna go to face mode. I'm gonna select, for instance, all of the faces from the from the actual head. And uh, the hair. So just shift and double click. It's a lot of faces, so this might get a little bit slow right now. There you go. Prince is saying that Blender has. No, you can still use the noiser, no for next, but I think you need to change to the Odin denoiser. I think that one's uh, like more universal. Maybe this was not the greatest idea. Maybe uh, separating this might be a better idea. So I'll do that in just a second. As soon as my Maya unfreezes. Uh, Makinter says, uh, Next dude, where do you save most of your work as it gets too big? I have multiple hard drives and I keep buying more and more hard drives as I need them. So yeah, it's it's part of the, of the job. You need, you need a lot of hard drives. So uh, I have... Um, I'll show you. 
I got my uh, my local hard drive where I install Unreal, where I install the software, where I have my projects. This is like the extra one where I, when I don't know where to play something, I place it there. All my tutorials are over here. Old John is all of my old files. So combined, I have like, it's not that much. It's like eight gigabytes or something, or eight, or eight terabytes or something of information. I also have Google Drive with like a cloud thing. So let's see if Maya recovers because otherwise I'm going to have to reopen it. I've got image sequence in Maya and there is some noise. So I'm looking at way to solve it. Okay, if you still have a lot of like, uh, like, like little noise right there, you might need to up the samples a little bit because even though that the noise here is really good, when you're doing an animation from each, like every time you change from, from one frame to another, the difference in, in noise is gonna be like, it's gonna be there. So that's where, where you might see like the little flickering and stuff. If you wanna reduce that, you need to up the samples. It's definitely gonna make your renders a little bit longer, but you, you're gonna be, a, or you're gonna have to, to up the samples. Second. In matter of effects, can Maya do stuff like Houdini? Also, do you plan learning Houdini? I know maybe you don't got the time now, but I'm curious. Uh, it can. It can. Uh, Bifrost is the is the plugin that we use for for Maya. I think this thing just got like. I think Maya just crashed. So uh, see you, Arian. See you later. So you can definitely do things inside of Maya similar to Houdini, like explosion, smoke simulation, water simulation, all that stuff. But Houdini, due to the way it's built, it's usually better for for that kind of stuff. Am I ever gonna learn Houdini? I don't know, man. It's it's such a like a different workflow than the one I'm used to. So it, it might be it might be a little bit complex to. It's definitely gonna be complex to to get it to work the way I would expect it to. So I'm I'm not sure I'm ever gonna be learning Houdini. I still have a lot of things about Maya that I need to that I need to learn. Uh, designer says I have bought your reading course and it uh, and that course you're moving joints and rotating joints. So I'm confused that I read that you shouldn't rotate your joints. No, it's not that you shouldn't rotate your joints. You shouldn't move the joints. Let me let me kill Maya because it's um it's um. This one is like stuck. Not sure which Maya it is. I'll show you in just a second. Um Too long. Have five uh, double A samples, and it took about five minutes per image. But I need, yeah, it, it is like actually five minutes is like standard. I would say for for renderers. I, I I know. I think I know which scene you're talking about. So it's it's pretty standard for a scene like that to take that much. Uh, that's why you don't see a lot of animation or, or rendering sequences on on portfolios because it definitely takes a long time. When I was at school, we had render farms, so that was really helpful because you could just like leave the stuff rendering overnight. But in your case, that's that's uh, if you can do like a denoiser, like someone suggested with Blender, that might be a better idea. Like the final denoise the final video, because otherwise, yeah, it's, it's definitely gonna take some time. So let me show real quick the joint thing because that's a very like common confusion, and then we'll continue with the book. So joints, and uh, we talk about this on our on our rigging course. Joints have something called a local rotation axis, and the local rotation axis is how the element is oriented, okay? So orientation, we know inside of Maya, orientations are X, Y, and C, right? Like uh, left, right, top, bottom, front, front, back. When you place a joint, this joint will no, not necessarily match the orientation of the world, as you can see right here. So if I if I move this uh, forward, it's not moving forward in the direction of the joint, it's moving forward in the direction of the world of Maya. 
But if I press W and click, I can change this to object orientation. As you can see now, the gizmo matches the local orientation of the joint like this. So the reason why we say you should not move joints, not rotate, you can rotate joints just fine. Like if you rotate the joint, nothing happens with the rot local rotation axis. It's, I mean, it switches, right? It, it will move, but it won't break. The problem is that when you grab a joint, like let's say I grab this joint and I move the joint, okay? That breaks the local rotation axis because by default, joints will always point their X axis to the next joint like this. And this is very helpful, especially for like things like fingers and spines and things like that. Um, it's very important that the rotations are always lined up to the to the next one. So when you move the joint, you break that uh, that direction, and that's why uh, you create a, an issue. Now you can move it; that's fine because later on you can realign them. But usually, when I'm teaching rigging, I tell students do not move your joints. If you want to place this joint up here, go to the previous joint and rotate that one up so that this one is where you want it to be. And then if you want to move this one down, you rotate this one down. That way the local rotation axis remain like a, as they should. So so that's the that's the general advice for that uh, for that kind of things. There you go. Andy says, how are interest treated in Mexico? In my country, they feel more exploited. For example, working seven to nine months without a pay and most won't get the job. Pretty feels pretty unethical. Uh, where are you from, man? That would be my first question. What, what, what country are you from? I'm gonna say mesh. I'm gonna separate every single piece into a different element. It's gonna take a little while here, but it make, should make it a little bit easier. Oh, thank you, random doodles, randomly doodles. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to check it today, but I, I assure you we'll check it um, on the next time, okay? So I'm gonna grab all of this, guys, for instance, and I'm gonna sign a new material, just a basic Lambert, and it's gonna be a basic, like, red material. This is gonna be like a mask. This is, again, this is called a, an ID map, which is what we wanna create. I'm gonna select, like, the face, this guy right here, the teeth, I'm gonna sign a new material. Another Lambert, and let's do like this light blue material. Uh, the eyes right now, they have uh, lights, that's why they look a little bit weird. So I'm gonna delete those. And let's also assign the blue material right there. And then for instance, the pages of the books, all of the pages are gonna have their own material as well. And you wanna try to keep these materials to to very basic materials and very like flat colors, like all of this top colors right here are usually the best because those are gonna give you the the cleanest masks that you can get. This is gonna be, let's say like a dark blue, then like all of this metal bits. Are gonna be like a purple or something. I think I'm also gonna give those guys the purple color. They kind of look metalish to me, so. Sign the material. And another Lambert. And these are gonna be purple. Color. And then, like, this guy's. It's like leather. This is. I think it's supposed to be like leather details or something. A lot of selection going on here. Where I lose that selection, I'm, I'm already gonna add like the new material. So it's gonna be like a green. I'll check the questions in just a second. Go. As you can see, we got some details there. Don't wanna miss those. All the details are important. There we go. And we assigned the last Lambert, which was the green one. And uh, this one's, this one's, I'm gonna give it a different one. Just to be able to get a, a different color as well. It's gonna be like some 
stitches. Now, we just ran out of, like, the primary colors, right, on the Lamberts. Like, we've used all of the ones on top. But now we can just start, like, moving to, like, an orange or something. As long as they're, like, different enough, we shouldn't have an issue. But when you have two very similar colors, then the tolerance instead of Substance Painter can be a little bit tricky. And, uh, and that's what could cause some uh, bleeding from one piece to the other. So, let's do Material, Arnold, oh, yeah. Lambert. We're gonna do, I don't know. Something like that. So, this is where things could be a little bit complicated, but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it like that so you guys can see what I mean. Okay. So let's see, let's ask some questions. Uh, are, am I the CEO of Nextud? No, no, I'm not the CEO of Nextud. The CEO of Nextud is Nalini. Um, pa -pa 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 -pa, no worries, it's a must piece. Um, but put a hole in that for a while, so I'm working. Yeah, if you if you join the Discord randomly doodles, you can uh, you can submit it on the work in progress folder that we have, and I'll be happy to take a look as well. Mm, so many online aliases. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, I'll, I'll check the Google Drive in just a second. There was another question that I saw here. Uh, Sweden. Okay, Andy. Yeah, Andy was asking about insurance. So, uh, yeah, it works a little bit different in, in every part of the world. For us here in, in, in the studio, we do have internships. We actually have three interns right now. And uh, we, we do pay them. We don't pay them like the same amount that a full-time artist would be making because they still do. They're, they're like half-time uh, like uh, workers. So, but we always try to pay them because uh, we do find it like unfair, as you say, to to be doing work that's going to be used for production and stuff and not being like a re remunerated for it, right? So, so yeah, it's this one. Let's say number six. So, but yeah, it's a. Uh, it's unfortunate. When I was an intern, I was not paid. Like uh, this was like ten years ago, and uh, I was an intern at a at a company, and I was not paid. But I knew it that that was that was how was how it was done back in the day. So, so I didn't have a lot of uh, options to be honest. Okay, let's go for the teeth. I just want to show you guys the bake because I'm, I really want to I want to see if the bake is gonna be working or not. Kill this 10 units. There we go. So as you can see, these are the teeth. Um, I just use a series measure for these teeth. But we actually don't need all of the geometry because as you can see, there's a lot of things that are hidden from the from the teeth. Push them. Get them a little bit closer to where this one is the one that I need to move a little bit. So right or rather, we can even use a trick. Let me show you this trick. It's a, it's a very cool one. So I'm going to grab this, guys. I'm going to use um, the cylinder, and then I'm going to grab this, guys. And I'm going to say mesh conform. And it will try to conform the points to the shape of the, of the teeth a little bit closer. There we go. And now, as I was saying, I'm going to go to the right view, and I'm definitely going to get rid of a lot of the, like the, the elements. Like we don't need all of this uh, teeth right here. They're gonna be hidden, right? So, so we really don't see them. This. There we go. Just to keep things a little bit cleaner. I'm just gonna delete that one. There's there might be like some spirals and stuff. Again, if we if we hide this one, and we hide teeth for now, and we just take a look at the at the low poly. Like, this is more than enough for what we want, right? There's a little bit of overlap. All of these things are in there, but that's fine. So now we need to do UVs for this one. I'm actually not sure if we kept the UVs for this one. It seems like we didn't. Got some cuts there. Can we unfold? Okay, perfect. So for this one's... Um, actually, another, like, all of the faces here on the top definitely definitely go 
it's gonna save me quite a bit of uh quite a bit of resolution and, and geometry so all of this there we go and uh we really don't need like anything fancy for these teeth so we can just give them a camera based projection and then just unfold them there we go like that's that's more than enough for for teeth cool so now i'm gonna grab both of these guys i'm gonna say mesh display soften edge and uh we're gonna assign the same material to them so new material maya lambert let's call this magic book underscore or actually i, I like to use m as in material and then magic book there we go and uh, we're gonna bring this into substance and see how this bakes because this is gonna be the, the important part uh let's see do, 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 do. i haven't posted in the discourse apparently of posting in wrong areas nah, don't worry man if you if you make a mistake that's fine it's not like the most like a <laughs> it's like not like we're not the most serious discord so don't worry about that um 10 in every scale yes i did 10 in every scale for this one because that's how i scaled your original book but if you're just working on a traditional scale you might not need to do that uh on your own uh stuff so yeah, yeah, and the unfortunately we live in a capitalistic world where uh, a lot of people only care about uh, the money, and um, that makes it very, very complicated to to find things or find places where things are like done in a in a human way. So yeah, uh, yeah, triangles don't deform well in animation. Game engines triangle dimensions on import. If they're on a flat hard surface, triangles are fine, but for characters, avoid them. That is a uh, yes. I mean, you're right that you should avoid them if possible. But they're perfectly fine if you know where to place them. Triangles, I like to call them a double-edged sword because um, they are very, very helpful, but you need to know where to use them and how to use them. I do go over that in the, in the character courses as well. So let's export this selection. Oh, file. Actually, first, let's <laughs> let's uh, fix the UVs because they are unfolded, but they're not laid out, so. Oh, I was using the UDIMS. There we go. So this is the like a basic layout, but as you can see, it's really bad to be honest. So let's try to fix this a little bit more. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. And what I wanna do is just wanna straighten things out. I got a question um, on our on our courses, I think it was yesterday, where, where someone was asking us like, why do you do like normal layout and then on other parts you just do automatic layouts? Like sometimes certain issues or certain items, it's a lot easier to just do an automatic layout. And other times, it's better to do a, a manual layout, so it depends. Depends. Now we do have some like a couple of crazy faces over here. I don't even know where they're from. Must be really small. Let's see if the bake works first, and if not, we'll we'll just uh, fix those. There we go. We're still missing the lock, I know. So, so I'm ju I just want to use this as a, as a sort of like test. So file, export selection. Let me set the project because I was working on the on the sci-fi project, which by the way is coming this week. Um, set this one. Assets. Magic book. And I'm going to create a new folder called the bakes. And inside of this folder, we're going to call this um, magic because this is the low poly. And now for the high poly, let's hide this one and hide this one. For the high poly, we need to export everything here, except for the lock. So I'm just gonna select everything. Like this, I'm gonna say file, export selection, and it's gonna be magic book, HP, high poly. There we go. Uh, let's see. Could you make specific video for transpose tool and scale master? Yes. Yes, I can do that. I will do that. How many assets should I include in my portfolio for your portfolio review? It can be yes, like it can be just one. That's fine. But usually a portfolio, if you're going to be presenting that portfolio to like studios and stuff, you want to have at least like six or seven uh, pieces, I would say. It's a good number. It depends on the complexity of the pieces, but yeah. Orient to Edge in UB Toolkit saves me so much time. Yeah, Orient to Edge is really, really good as well. Padding. I did not use a lot of padding in this one. Do you see how the custom-esque key you 3D printed? Yeah, it's right here. 
the little uh, Cthulhu key that I printed. It's available to download as well if you guys want to 3D print or if you want to do your own. Uh, this I 3D printed with my Elegu Mars and I'm using it as my little uh, Cthulhu-esque key. There we go. So I'm going to say File, New, and we're going to select our book. So let's go to uh, our assets here. Magic book bakes and we're going to use our magic book bake right here uh 2k i do not want to use udems i do not want to auto unwrap or to import cameras open gl is fine and i am going to do this in 4k just to to get an idea okay it says that some normals are invalid or null that's fine again as long as it imports we just need to find where those might be but so far i don't see any any major mistake or error so yeah that looks good Let's go texture set settings. I'm gonna say bake mesh maps, and we're gonna bake this at 4K, and we're gonna bring in our Magic Book HP. This is the new baker. If you guys haven't seen this, we talked about it a couple months ago when it, it released, and it's really good because as you can see right here, I get this red elements that tell me, hey, your bake is not gonna catch that detail there. So that means that I need to increase my max frontal distance a little bit, just so that I don't have any like red elements. I still have like a couple points right there. So again, that's like, hey, you probably want to increase the max frontal distance just a tad bit to make sure that you capture as much of the detail as possible. Now, if we increase this too much, though, we might get a little bit of an issue with um, things baking on top of other things. But let's let's give this a go. It's going to bake. That's the normal map. It looks really good. Actually, that looks really damn good. That's the ID map. There we go. And then my favorite one, the ambient occlusion. Curvature. Position. Thickness, there we go. So, wow, this looks really good, guys. Look at that. Not bad. We do get a little bit of an issue here on the papers. Ah, uh, but everything else looks really, really nice, I would say. Not freaking bad. Got a, a couple of issues. That's another issue right there. But the character looks good, and of course, this is the, the problem that we have with the elements. Now, we can try to tweak this a little bit better. So, for instance, here, um, we can try to increase the max frontal distance a little bit. But the problem is, the max frontal distance is now a little bit too big. And that's why we're getting this, like, bakes here on the on the papers. Like, they're baking into each other. And that's where, why we're getting, like, this weird effects right there. It's not the end of the world. It's um, it's 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 again. It's something that we can like, play around with or, or just like ignore. It's a little bit weird that we're getting empty normals there, though. Not sure why that might be. But yeah, I mean, this looks really, really good. I like this. Now, for instance, here's here's where the ID map comes comes into play really nicely. Let's say we want to add like a stone effect, like this is stone detail to the to the head. What I can do here. Is I can just right click, add a black mask, and on the black mask, instead of using uh, like a traditional mask and painting where I want the stone to be, I can just right click and say color selection and pick a color, pick this blue color, and as you can see, it's gonna automatically select the whole thing. So, this is the beauty of ID maps, and this is the, the main thing that I wanna show you today, guys. Like, how, how by doing this clean uh, ID maps, we're gonna be able to texture this thing very very fast inside of uh, inside of substance so uh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm not gonna stop the stream yet, just yet but I'm gonna stop the exercise right now because I want to do texturing the next time we have our live stream and I want to use the remaining time that we have right now to uh, answer some questions and go over some of the courses that we have available. As I was mentioning earlier, we have this uh, promo code right here, which you can use in Udemy to get any of our courses. We have Substance courses, Seabridge courses, Maya courses, anything that you want to learn. If you like the way I'm teaching things, then you can check them out. But let's take a look at some questions right here. So, um, it feels almost like Marmoset Peterlin is asking. Uh, actually, Marmoset came with, with texturing later. So Substance Painter was the texturing software first, and then Marmoset, I wouldn't say copy, but they implemented their own like painting and baking options uh, into their system. Well, Marmoset had baking for, for a long time, right? But yeah, it, it, it's very similar to Marmoset if you, if you were talking about the baking. Uh, Roma says, don't worry, practice makes improvement. Do it again if you need. I think you are talking to randomly doodles. And yes, um, yes, practice is very important in the 3D world. 
Let's see, do we have any more questions, my friends? Icy says, sir, may I ask, um, how much day does it spend to make one complete modeling with textures, rigging, finishing production? For example, avatar character or temporary character robot on a movie. That's a great question. That's a great, great question. So again, the answer, I hate giving this answer, but it depends, right? It's not the same thing to do a, a character for a video game, like a simple character, than it is to do like an avatar character. So I'm going to give you... Um, a, a number that I got from from a friend of mine that was watching wa working in Overwatch. So in Overwatch, you get this all of this like characters, right? A character, like the cycle for a character production, is about four months. Uh, talking about like modeling, rigging, uh, texturing, and that sort of stuff. Animation, it, it depends depending on how complex or simple the animations are. But usually, a character like this will take about four months to be done. So as a character artist, you're not expected to be doing one of these characters every single week or something. But there are other pro productions where you are. So um, again, my, my portfolio is not the best one to, to follow. But when I was working in this uh, in this game a couple of, uh, well, not a couple, several years ago, I had to do one of these characters per week. Like my, my um, I was expected to, to sculpt, retopologize, UV and texture one of these characters per week. And uh, as you can see, I mean, it's not a bad character, but the level of quality is not the same as what you could get for like Overwatch and stuff. So it all depends. The more time you spend on something, the better it can be. Avatar characters, they took years, years to do those creatures and things like Avatar 2 has been in production since I was in school, which was in 2015. So it was in production for like eight years or something. It was just crazy. So yeah, it, it, it depends quite a bit. Uh, this one, for instance, the reason why I was given only a week was because the character was going to be seen from this distance right here. So as long as it looked good from this distance, then we were good. But um, it all depends on the production. If you're if you're doing your portfolio, I would suggest like two or three weeks for a character to do like the four the full uh, process. Th that would be like the the average, I would say. Uh, only OGs remember DDO2. Yeah, DDO2. That was a, that was a different time, man. Uh, what's a really complex scene you created in your career so far? It's a great question. I'm trying to think. I mean, all of the tutorial things that I've done have been quite complex. I've always tried to 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 teach like really advanced stuff, even if it's a, a simple tutorial. But from a, oh, from a, from a career perspective, there's this theme park here in Mexico called Scaret. It's a really famous, uh, like tourist uh, venue for people who go to Cancun, which is our, one of our most famous like beaches here in the country, right? And the Scaret has a show at the end of the night where you see a lot of like Mexican culture, folklore, like dances and traditions and legends and stuff like that. So we were asked, my studio was asked to help with this show back in the day. And this was in 2016, I think. And there were some really complex stuff that they wanted to be done. And back then the technology was not as good. So, so we tried our best and we did some really, really cool stuff. We were using Unreal. I actually, I think we were one of like the first studios here in Mexico that was trying to use Unreal for production work rather than for games. And uh, we were really successful. Like um, the, the result was really, really nice. The reason is they wanted to have like thousands of like uh, butterflies at the same time. And it was really, really complicated to have them or to do the renders and then do iterations on the renders. So we were doing everything in um, in Unreal back then. Uh, I don't have the the files, or, or I can't really show what they're uh, what we did there because it's under NDA. But um, but yeah, that was one of the like the most complex uh, clients that I had to work with, which was really really. Cool. Um, one more question: Is that code just for use once, or it can be used infinitely? You can use this as many times. So if you want to get more, like two, three, four, five courses, you can just use this course and get ninety percent off as many courses as you want. So yeah, it, it applies to as many courses as you want. You can get the full library if you want. Roma, Roma is gone. We're gonna see Roma on the next street. Roma's song. What's your PC spec and should I buy i9-13900 or Ryzen? I personally am using a Ryzen because I switched from uh, Intel to Ryzen or to AMD. When was this? I think it was like a couple of, like like in 2016 when I, when I started the studio, 
when I was doing like budgets and stuff, I I I, I switched to Ryzen. I've been using it since. It's not that strong. My, my, I have the Ryzen Seven. It's a Ryzen Seven five uh, five thousand eight hundred or something like that. If you can get the Ryzen Nine, dude, go for it. It's fucking strong. So yeah. Oh, I shouldn't have sweared. Maybe we'll get banned or something. Hopefully we don't. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's, it's uh, freaking strong. The the Ryzen Nine um, the Ryzen Nine processor. Well. That's it, guys. Uh, just a couple of announcements before we finished. We do have our Discord channel. I'm gonna I'm gonna send the link if you guys want to join. If you're new here to the channel, then welcome. My name is Abraham, and uh, I've been teaching 3D for the past like 10 years. So you guys can update or upload your your works in progress. We have a, a good community here in the in the next to the server. So if you guys want to join, the link is also in the description. There you go. But um. But we can, uh, yeah, we can hang out here. I'm here, so if you need something, you can send me a message, and I'm, I'm always happy to to help if I can. And uh, yeah, yeah, they run hot. The Ryzen do run hot randomly, uh, but as long as you have like proper cooling, I have water cooling for mine, so I have a water cooling dissipator, and I have like a ton of fans. Uh, you shouldn't like they are designed to run hot. So if you don't mind seeing a big number on your temperatures, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, that's it guys. Uh, the discord link is down here or it's right here on the chat If you want to join feel free to do that We're gonna have another live stream I think on Thursday probably or Friday where uh, we'll continue texturing this guy right here and this code right here The the all courses 90% off thing. It's only gonna be available until the 27th So if you want to get a course make sure to use it before it expires because we won't have another sale Until probably the next month. So again, if you want to uh, if you want to use the code, it's gonna be right here and um yeah that's it my friends thank you for being here on the live stream it's been a pleasure and uh i'll be seeing you back uh next time okay make sure to hit me up on discord if you need anything and uh i'll see you back tomorrow we're gonna have more videos so thank you very much my friends and happy